In the 1927 silent film, The Beloved Rogue, John Barrymore delivered a captivating performance as Francois Villot, the famed poet and rogue of 15th century France. At 45, Barrymore was at the peak of his acting career, and this film highlighted his dynamic range. Produced by Feature Productions and distributed by United Artists, the film showcased his ability to blend physicality with emotional depth, making his performance particularly compelling for the era's cinematic experiences. Barrymore was somewhat older than the character of Villor, who was meant to be significantly younger in the film. Despite this age difference, his performance seamlessly transitioned between a thief's rugged, charismatic demeanor, and a refined, noble appearance. Even within the constraints of the film's old-fashioned silent format, his expressive facial features, adept conveyed a range of dynamic moods, effectively embodying the roles of poet, thief, fighter, lover, clown, hero, and avenger. While not distinctly muscular, Barrymore's physique was adequately fit and well-proportioned. This physicality suited the swashbuckling nature of his character with agility and charisma. Toward the film's climax, he was shown either shirtless or with his shirt dramatically torn open at the front, enhancing the visual impact of his daring escapades. While attempting to rescue his lover, Charlotte, by scaling the high tower's wall, Villor finds himself besieged by Burgundy soldiers. As he climbed, the soldier shot him with a crossbow, striking his left arm. Grappling with intense pain, the rogue tried to remove the arrow with his right hand, all while clinging precariously to the wall with his injured left. His strength faltered under the strain, and he lost his grip, plummeting down into the waiting arms of the soldiers below, who swiftly captured him. After his capture, Villor was initially brought unrestrained to meet the Duke of Burgundy in the dungeon. However, when the Duke ordered his punishment, Soldiers quickly grabbed his arms, holding them firmly at his sides for the ordeal. Subsequently, for more prolonged and intense torture, they tied his wrists separately with long ropes, and hoisted them above his head, fully stretching his arms. His legs remained free, adding to the torment by keeping him mobile yet powerless. After Villor fell unconscious from the brutal torment, his captors placed him in a small cage and hoisted it up outside the high tower, bringing it adjacent to the chamber that confined Charlotte. This deliberate positioning cruelly allowed the lovers to see each other from their respective confines, close enough to make eye contact, yet agonizingly unable to reach each other. Under the Duke's orders, Villor faced severe torture in the dungeon. Soldiers firmly held his arms at each side, immobilizing him as he stood with his back exposed. Two floggers commenced their brutal task, lashing him repeatedly across his bare skin. Each stroke was delivered with harsh precision, marking his back with the evidence of his ordeal. This whipping was the first step to weaken and subdue his resistance. 
Then, the soldiers brought him to the platform above the large braziers. They tied his wrists separately, stretched his arms fully above his head, and proceeded to swing his body towards the braziers below, in a series of cruel maneuvers. The first time, they briefly suspended him just above the flames. But the second time, was far more severe. They threw him directly into the fire, holding him there for a more extended period. Throughout the torment, they harshly pulled him up and down, pushing the limits of human endurance. Viyur's captors placed him in a cage and hoisted it high up the tower adjacent to Charlotte's chamber. This setup exploited their deep desire to be reunited, intensifying their emotional pain. The stark visibility of each other and the physical barriers that kept them apart poignantly underscored the tragic nature of their separation. This deliberate act of cruelty highlighted the heart-wrenching plight of the lovers, trapped within sight but beyond reach. At the climax, Viyur's attire was pared down to its bare essentials. Stripped to his waist, he wore only trousers, so tattered they resembled a rugged loincloth. Throughout his ordeal in the dungeon, he remained shirtless, his average build on display. This stark visual choice emphasized his vulnerability over heroic muscularity highlighting his human fragility amidst the harsh conditions. Later, when Viyur was placed in the cage, he donned a torn shirt that barely covered him. It was frayed and threadbare, and failed to conceal his bare chest, leaving it exposed until his eventual release. This visual depiction emphasized a more realistic form of resilience, one that did not rely on physical toughness, but rather on his enduring spirit and mental strength. Viyur was portrayed not as an invulnerable hero, but as an ordinary man with mental and spiritual fortitude. Even while bound and in considerable pain, he attempted to raise his arm as a sign of resistance. However, he could not withstand the intense torment that overwhelmed him, causing him to collapse into unconsciousness. This vulnerability added depth to his character, pointing up his human limits amidst his enduring courage. As the leader of the oppressed, Viyur wielded every skill at his disposal, notably his poetic talent, to ignite a spirit of resistance. This same talent played a pivotal role in his liberation. The poet seized the opportunity when the Duke attempted to humiliate him during a marriage celebration. He delivered a stirring speech that galvanized the onlookers and shifted the atmosphere. This moment of chaos provided the perfect cover for the king and his men to reveal themselves and intervene just in time to prevent the duke from executing him. The scene from Viyur's capture to his breakout, spanning over five minutes, marked the climax near the film's end and was meticulously crafted to highlight the peak of his character an ordinary man endowed with extraordinary spirit. Despite the era's limitations, including black and white imagery and silent film techniques, the film successfully captured the essence of the muscles and manacles theme, which has been popular and frequently depicted in cinema for over a century.
Thank you.